for Hello and welcome to Shannon Parker from Harris County Pets and Animal Care. She's here to give us a slice of pet life in Harris County. Shannon, if you would please take it away. The Harris County Pets Resource Center. So some of you may be familiar, we were the Harris County Animal Shelter. Um, the voters of Harris County voted to give us a new building, a much needed new building back in 2015. And so this building was finished in, um, or we occupied it, I should say, in uh, the middle of 2020, right in the middle of the pandemic. Um, but we um, desperately needed a new facility. Our old facility was not only outdated, but was very small and cramped and did not have the facilities needed um, to prevent disease transmission, um, house rabies, quarantine animals properly, that type of thing. So this building um, was a long time coming, but was much very needed. Um, we went from about 18,000 square feet in the old facility to 50,000 square feet in this new facility. We, however, did not in any way, shape or form double in staff. So this has been quite uh, <laughs> a challenge for us. Um, so we will just keep moving here. Um, and you're gonna see me in a lot of these photos because when the professional photographer wanted to come, unfortunately, no one volunteered. So guess who's in a lot of these photos? I'm not that narcissistic, I promise you. Um, but this is our adoption lobby um, where people come when they're considering adopting a pet. And then we, a new thing that we added to this facility, which we did not have in the old facility is we have indoor outdoor um, kennels. The old facility only had indoor kennels. So this gives our dogs a chance to go outside, get some sunshine, get some fresh air, um, escape some of the noise that's inside the kennels. So this is a, really a great feature. These walls um, right here, these gray brownish walls, those are called bark walls. So they basically prevent the left side of the kennels from seeing the right side of the kennels and vice versa. It just reduces stress for the animals in our facility. So um, that was another nice feature that we had with this new facility. Um, another thing we didn't have with the old facility was a separate cat area. So now we do have a separate cat area. Um, these animals, the cats now have a litter box and a, um, we have an entire cat land dedicated just to cats. This also reduces the stress for our cats as, um, they're not having to hear the dogs barking constantly. So that was a very much needed improvement for our new facility. We have our outdoor meet and greet areas, um, which allows someone to take an animal out, obviously a dog, not a cat, but take a dog out and spend some time with it before um, they choose to adopt. Um, a lot of people request that they bring their animal to meet a potential new dog. Um, and we do allow that. However, I do want to just let everybody know that the uh, shelter in general is kind of a stressful environment, even for your pet that's probably never been in a shelter. So when you bring a pet here to meet a new pet, they're probably not going to be acting the way um, either you would want them to or, or you would like them to because of the smells, the noise, et cetera. So just kind of give everybody a break if you're wanting to bring a new pet to meet a potential new pet. Um, sometimes they act themselves and sometimes they don't, but people are welcome to bring their animal in order to do a meet and greet. We have a grooming room. So this room is used to bathe our dogs um, and groom our dogs. We have volunteers that come and like to bathe dogs and then also adopters sometimes like to bathe their dog before they bring their dog home. So this is a great new feature as well. A lot of people don't know, we have a low cost pet wellness clinic um, on site here at our facility. Um, you do not have to be a resident of Harris County in order to use our services. And I will say this, if you own a pet, you will not find lower costs for vaccinations, um, flea and tick medication, heartworm medication, um, probably anywhere. Our prices are ridiculously low. Um, we obviously do pet vaccinations and obviously, like I said, flea and tick and heartworm preventative medications, but we also do things like x-rays. Um, we do skin cytology, we do mass cytology, um, we do blood work. So we do a lot of things that's somewhat in between a low cost pet clinic and a emergency full service vet. So we um, have a lot of services that we offer that most general pet clinics don't offer. Um, again, we're still at the same location, 612 Canino Road in Houston. We are an open intake facility. 
A lot of people don't know what that means when I say open intake facility. So basically, um, we have to take in every animal that a resident from unincorporated Harris County brings to us, regardless of its medical or behavior conditions. So we take in anywhere from 16 to 20,000 animals per year. When I say open intake, that means we can't turn you away if you live within unincorporated Harris County. This is unlike the SPCA and the Humane Society. Um, and even CAP, um, Citizens for Animal Protection on I-10, they are a limited intake facilities, which means if you bring an animal to them that they do not deem adoptable, they can and might turn you away. Um, we do not have that luxury. Um, BARC, the Bureau of Animal Regulation and Care, BARC, is the city of Houston animal open intake facility. So BARC operates uh, similar to us, but BARC is for the city of Houston residents. And then Harris County Pets is for the residents of unincorporated Harris County that do not live within the city limits. Um, even though we take in um, 16 to 20,000 animals per year, we are currently at a, right now we are at a 98.8% live release rate, which means that 98 out of 100 animals, I don't, we, residents of unincorporated Harris County, and again, um, because of COVID, all services are by appointment at this time. Some of our services can be made online, but a majority of our services still need to call and um, make an appointment. Again, the new facility opened to fully to the public in August of last year. Um, again, the square footage we went to and from, and then um, we went from about 150 kennels to 525 kennels. Um, and people think, oh, well, you can take in more animals. Yes, um, in theory, yes, but of only about 340 of our total kennels, dogs and cats included, are for um, adoptable healthy animals because most people don't know that we house, um, uh, if an animal bites someone and the court orders rabies quarantine that we house those animals. We also house the dogs that the court mandates are dangerous dogs. We have to house those animals. Um, we have animal control here in the building. And so even though we technically have 525 kennels, only about 340 of those are for healthy adoptable animals. The rest are our medical kennels um, and other things where the animals are not quite ready for adoption or they're just not available for adoption. Um, Again, indoor outdoor dog kennels has been a wonderful thing for our dogs and separate sleeping and litter box areas for our cats. Our services, obviously we're an adoption center. We want everybody to come adopt. We make it very easy. Um, you don't have to live in Harris County to adopt from us. Um, your adoption fee includes spay neuter surgery, microchip, a one year Harris County pet license, as well as all age appropriate vaccinations, including rabies. So. Um, our adoption fees are low and you get a lot for your money. So it's a great place to come and look. We try to have a robust adoption program, a um, little bit of every type of animal or, or look of animal for anybody that's interested. Any animal that resides in Harris County over the age of three months should have a Harris County pet license by law. Um, that is a license that basically allows us to, for lack of a better term prove that your animal has a rabies vaccination. We are under the Harris County um, Public Health Department. So one of our big initiatives and one of our big concerns is that all animals have a rabies vaccination to prevent that deadly disease. Um, and I'll go over that a little bit later, but um, pet licensing, licensing is part of that. Like I said, we house animal control. Um, and then um, my job, um, education and community outreach is, um, what I do, we try to educate people on how to be responsible pet owners. In my job, I have found that it's not, people don't want to be responsible pet owners. They don't know how to be responsible pet owners and what that involves and what resources they have um, at their disposal. So that's a big part of what we like to do is educate um, people on how to be a responsible pet owner. Um, Harris County does have a leash law that does um, include uh, dogs and cats. Um, and so that's the other thing about keeping your animal confined um, is part of what I try to, to teach people. Um, we do have a Harris County Sheriff's Deputy that works for me in this department that provides additional training to various police departments, the constables, sheriff's department. Most people don't know that any um, 
law enforcement personnel that goes through their academy, they've got about an hour's worth of animal law training total. <laughs> so they're um, left with a big gap in what they know about roadside vendor laws, how um, they should interact with aggressive dogs, um, that type of thing. So my sheriff's deputy goes and educates other law enforcement personnel about what exactly is cruelty um, and those types of things. So that's a big part of what we do here in our education department as well. And then obviously, like I said before, we are um, the open intake facility for residents of unincorporated Harris County. We use uh, this fancy marketing term called pet counseling, but um, we obviously um, cannot turn you away. We are still by appointments and appointments are about a month out. Um, we try to keep people with their pets. So we have a lot of resources in our intake diversion department that, um, okay, do you need a crate because your puppy's chewing on something while you're at work? Or do you need food? Or do you just need vaccinations in order to keep your animal? What are the things that we might be able to help you with to keep your animal with you. Um, taking an animal to any animal shelter, regardless of how great or bad you think it is, should really be your last option. We really encourage people to rehome, responsibly rehome their pets if they can no longer keep their pets. Um, a lot of people think, oh, I'm not gonna bring them to the animal shelter. They're just gonna kill them. They're just gonna euthanize them. And for some animal shelters, that probably is the case. Um, you know, we have an imp a, a finite amount of staff and a space here. So unfortunately, um, we like to see our live release rate stay at at least above 95%. Um, and we can't do that if there's a large amount of animal surrenders, um, if we can at least maybe help some of those people to keep their animals with them. Uh, just some stats for 2020, I won't go through these, but suffice it to say, um, we have about 100 staff members here total, um, that's including animal control. Um, so we do a lot of work with uh, a lot of animals, again, 16 to 20,000 per year. Um, we also love our volunteers. We um, encourage volunteers. Um, you only have to be 16 years of age or older to volunteer here. Um, I can have a volunteer position for you where if you only want to work with the dogs, you can work only with the dogs. If you only like cats, you can only work with the cats. If you want to come and help, but you don't really ever want to have to see or touch an animal, I have a volunteer position for that as well. So um, we have a lot of volunteer opportunities um, that uh, we desperately need volunteers for. We very much depend on our volunteer base um, to do simple things, come and walk a few dogs or um, provide some enrichment to the cats. Um, or heck, if you want to do laundry and you never want to see an animal, we can do that. Or you have, um, you know, office experience. I'm sure we have something in the office that, that would work for you as well. So, and I encourage people to come visit here because it is not a sad, depressing place. Like a lot of people think shelters are. This is, um, this is the cream of the crop, uh, when it comes to, um, Animal shelters, not only in the look and feel of the building, but also in the fact that we are doing an amazing job um, finding animals outcome, um, like I said, for 98 plus percent of our animals that come through here. So I'll just go into a couple things that I like to um, go over um, people think about adopting. And so I always ask people to ask themselves these questions. You know, where do you live? Do you live in a house or an apartment? Do you have time for a pet? Um, does every person in the home want a pet? And I have to focus on that for a second because I will tell you more often than not, um, a person brings home an animal and goes, oh, look, honey, look what I got. And the other person goes, oh, no, thank you. Um, so it's really important that every person in the home actually wants a pet and will at least help care for it to an extent. Um, pets are not cheap. I will tell you, I have three dogs and a cat and three foster kittens and they're not cheap. Um, even at our low pro low cost clinic, they're they're still not cheap. So you have to be prepared for the cost of owning a pet. Um, and you can can you provide a safe and loving home? Um, we try to counsel people when they come to adopt. You know, if tying your dog up in the yard is your idea of wanting an animal. That's probably not the best thing for you or the dog. A lot of people think that they want a dog for protection, and I will be honest. Most dogs that you put on a chain or a tether twenty four seven. Um, are typically not, number one, able to protect your property and house because they are on a chain or tether. And then two, a lot of them um, get depressed. Dogs are pack animals. They don't want to be alone. They either want to be with other dogs or they want to be with their family. And so putting them out in the backyard 24-7 um, is 
honestly, in my opinion, just not a great idea. So we try to counsel people um, in those aspects. And then we always like to tell people puppies don't stay puppies. Um, puppies are cute, puppies are great, puppies are fabulous. Um, if you've never had a toddler before, um, puppies are about the same as a toddler. They eat, sleep, poop, cry, whine, chew things, get into things they shouldn't. So if you don't want a toddler, you probably don't want a puppy. Um, puppies are a lot of work um, and they don't stay puppies. They become dogs. Um, so we always like to remind people of that too when they come to adopt. Pets are a lifetime commitment. Obviously, do your research before you get a pet. Um, be prepared to invest in training and socialization. Um, again, most dogs, a lot of dogs, most dogs are dog selective. You're not going to find a lot of dogs that like everybody and everything. Um, we were talking about this when we first started. Um, dogs are a lot like people. They're not going to like everyone and everything. Um, and so you're going to need to be prepared to invest in some training and some socialization. Um, you, need, you need to find a good vet. Again, pets are not cheap. Sometimes accidents happen or illnesses happen. So you need to be prepared for that expense, um, financial expense, plus the cost of just general food and your monthly heartworm preventative um, and flea preventative. Although here at the wellness clinic, your monthly heartworm and flea preventative are very inexpensive. Again, we have our low cost pet wellness clinic. Um, a lot of things we offer, um, it's staffed by a licensed veterinarian and um, vet assistants. And so, um, we try very hard to educate people on being a responsible pet owner, making sure your dog has all their vaccinations, they're kept on heartworm and um, flea preventative. Most of you know heartworms are a huge problem here in the South with our hot weather, and so um, it's important to keep your dog and cat on a heartworm preventative medicine each month. And I always like to tell people collars and leashes and ID tags can come off. Your microchip will never come off your pet. Um, the microchip is not a GPS or tracking device. It's not going to tell anybody where your animal is. It's simply gonna tell somebody with a scanner who your animal belongs to. Um, it's a little chip that's basically the size of a grain of rice and it's inserted under the skin, right on the back between the shoulder blades. Um, it's not any more painful usually than a regular vaccination your dog or cat would get, um, but it's permanent. It's not coming out. So if you move, if you change your phone number, all that information can be updated on the pet's microchip. So um, someone who finds the dog um, can scan it. Any Petco, PetSmart, Pet Store um, can scan, a, any vet can scan. Um, any animal control officer, if they find your animal and they scan your animal, they make attempts to get your animal back to you. So it's important to keep your microchips updated with your current contact information. Um, that's one thing that all animals that are adopted here from us come home with, they are microchipped. So it's important that um, people keep that information up to date. And again, they're not GPS or tracking devices. They're not gonna tell us where your animal is. It's just gonna tell us what, who the animal belongs to. Obviously, when you adopt here, we spay or neuter. You cannot adopt from us without the animal being spayed or neutered. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that besides pet overpopulation. Um, spaying or neutering, neutering will reduce aggression in your animal, marking, you know, peeing on things they shouldn't, uh, as well as roaming. Most people don't know that a male dog can smell a female dog that's in heat more than a mile away. So that's where you get male dogs digging out from underneath fences and things like that because it's just the hormones going crazy. So it's always a good idea to spay or neuter. Um, it also lowers risk of cancer. Um, again, decreases pet overpopulation and unwanted animals. Um, if anybody feels like there's not a pet overpopulation in the South, I invite them to come spend a day with me <laughs> and we'll sit at the intake desk and I will show you differently. Um, there's a lot of unwanted animals in this county, unfortunately. Um, and um, it's just unfortunate that they, if we had spay or neuter more, we would have less of that problem. Um, and I, a lot of things I hear from people is, I, oh, I just want them to have one litter, or I just want to them to experience birth, the you know childbirth, or I want my kids to experience the, the childbirth. 
that's all fine and good, but honestly, cats and dogs do not care if they are parents. They don't have that biological clock like some women say they have. They don't um, feel a need to be a parent like humans do. Um, they will never know. Your male dog will never miss his male parts, I promise you. He will, won't even know. Um, and if you spay them or if you neuter a dog early enough, um, they won't even have those parts to miss. So um, it's really important that we spay and neuter our pets. We also um, offer here at Harris County Pets a community cat program. It's a free and humane program designed to reduce the number of cats living on the streets. A lot of people call these cats feral cats or um, free roaming cats, and they are. They're cats that they will find shelter wherever they can. What we like to do to reduce that population is what we call shelter, neuter, and return. So basically, if a cat is brought to us, we um, spay or neuter it, and then we return it um, after it's vaccinated and altered back to the place which it was found. And a lot of people get upset with us because they don't understand why, we're, why we are returning this cat back to where it was found. And I'll tell you why. Um, number one, if you take a bunch of cats, community cats, feral cats out of a area and you don't put them back altered and um, vaccinated, you are just gonna have an entire group of new cats move in because more than likely the resources there for cats are plentiful and that's why those cats were there. Either someone's feeding them or they're hunting or whatever, but you're just gonna have a whole new group of cats move in if you just take out a bunch of cats from an area. So we put them back, therefore they're not reproducing. Um, it reduces the marking, the spraying of, of urine. It reduces the yowling, the 3 a.m. Um, literal, literal cat calls to find mates. Um, and it just, provides um, a way to uh, reduce the number of that population. Um, there's also a bunch of humane uh, deterrents you can purchase on Amazon, Chewy, wherever, um, that will keep a cat out of your yard if you don't want a cat in your yard. Um, you just need to Google in, uh, humane deterrents, humane cat deterrents. A lot of them are motion sensored or ultrasonic or battery operated, so they don't need to be plugged in or wired or anything like that. There's also a ton of scents you can use to keep a cat out of your yard. Um, cats dislike citrus. They dislike used coffee grounds. They dislike eucalyptus. They dislike cedar. So there's a lot of things that you can put in your yard that obviously need to be refreshed in, uh, time after time, but um, they can keep cats out of your yard as well. Um, one of the things you'll notice from a community cat is they have been ear tipped. So this ear tip is done while they are under for their spay and neuter surgery. And this signifies that this cat has been spayed or neutered, vaccinated and returned to the community it came from. So if you find a cat with an ear tip, that's purposeful. So that cat will not reproduce, cannot reproduce, and also has been vaccinated, including rabies. Um, and it just needs to be left alone, to be honest. Um, you know, some people think, well, I can re rehabilitate them and they, they'll live indoors with me and they'll be great pets. And I will be honest, cats are not like dogs. Um, a lot of them want nothing to do with us. Um, they're, they're great um, when they are socialized young and they're in a home environment, but if they've grown up, having to fend for themselves in an outdoor environment, they typically don't want to be living inside. Um, they find cats are also a lot, um, I don't wanna say smarter, but a lot more resourceful than dogs as well. Um, cats will find shelter, cats will find safe places, cats can climb trees. Um, they're a lot more equipped to live outdoors than dogs are. So. Um, spaying and neutering them, ear tipping them, vaccinating them, and putting them back is the best way and the most humane way we can reduce an outdoor um, community cat population. So I mentioned rabies a little bit before, and I'm not going to go through all this, but I just want to touch on this. This is a slide that we sometimes give, um, animal control gives, but Rabies is a viral disease um, and it is almost always fatal. In fact, I think there's one person on the planet that has survived um, a rabies infection. And unfortunately with rabies, by the time um, it has spread through your body, you pretty much don't know it and it's too late to do anything about it. So it's really important that um, we 
insist that the dogs and cats that we adopt out and that we find, et cetera, um, have a rabies vaccination. It's very, very important. Um, I really can't stress enough how important it is. Um, even if you don't, you know, a lot of vets will tell you for older dogs and older cats that they probably don't need any more yearly vaccinations, but I would um, definitely suggest they get a rabies vaccination um, as they get older. Um, a lot of people don't, uh, don't know the um, animals that actually spread rabies the most. So bats are the number one um, animal that spreads rabies um, in Texas. Um, don't mess with bats. <laughs> I know sometimes they're cute. I know there's some gathering stations here in town. Um, I know there's, you know, under the bridge in Austin, but I would advise you to stay away from bats whenever possible. Um, a scratch, a bite, you almost don't even know what happens. Um, and it, it, like I said, if, if they are infected with rabies, um, you will be infected with rabies. And also the um, medical care after exposure to rabies is also very expensive. Um, it's not very cheap to, to get the, the correct um, medical care after exposure to rabies. So bats are something I would stay away from. Um, skunks, raccoons, foxes, coyotes. Um, but one thing that people often mistake is our little opossum friends. It is very rare that an opossum has rabies. Their low body temperature makes it almost impossible um, to carry the virus. And I will tell you what, they are the best pest control money can't buy. Um, so when you see a possum, I can pretty much guarantee you that animal does not have rabies. Um, they are uh, wonderful, wonderful animals to have in the wild. Like I said, free pest control. They're not carrying any diseases. Um, and they pretty much keep to themselves. So um, a lot of people think they carry rabies, they do not. Uh, bats would be your number one concern. And if you noticed on um, this last slide, dogs weren't even on there um, because we are doing in general in this country, a good, a good job of vaccinating uh, dogs and cats, but definitely your little possum friends, you can, you can definitely leave them alone. And this is more what I teach um, our, our kids when we go to schools and things like that. Um, it's really important to not go near or touch an animal that you don't know. Um, you always have to ask the owner before you pet an animal. Um, obviously, we want to teach kids to never to bother a pet when they're eating or touch his food while he's eating. This includes toys um, or anything that an animal would consider his. I think that carries over into respect for everything else in life. And so it's important that we teach our kids to be good stewards of animal care. Um, dog pipe prevention. This is more for if you encounter a strange or aggressive dog when you're walking or in a neighborhood or things like that. And a lot of people don't know these things. And um, if you've seen the news lately, there's a lot of, um, there's been some dog attacks and I'll just go over this real quick and, and, and maybe we can avoid some of these in the future. But obviously if a dog comes up to you and is snarling or growling or barking, you do not want to move forward towards the dog. You don't want to in any way, shape, bend forward or move forward. They will consider that a sign of aggression. The best thing to do is to stop moving. Um, literally stop moving, stop moving your arms, stop shaking your head back and forth, stop moving every part of you. Um, I will say this, the worst thing you can do is run. If you run from an aggressive dog, they will see you as prey and they will run after you. It's a given. Um, I, I don't know how much I can stress that more. Um, you never want to look an animal, even, a, even an animal you know, you do not want to look an animal directly in their eyes. This is kind of with cats as well. Um, staring at the eyes of another animal is considered by that animal a sign of aggression. So you never want to, to look directly at their eyes. You want to look away, look at the side of their face, look at their chest, look at their feet look someplace else, but you never want to look at the animal in their eyes. More importantly, do not yell or scream. So, you know, people think saying no, no, that is only encouraging that animal to be defensive. If you have to talk at all, you want to use a very low, calm voice. Um, nice dog, nice dog, you know, and you really don't want to talk if you can all help it. You don't want you to be, um, and I teach kids this, you really want to be a tree. 
You do not want to have um, any noise, any movement, anything that would be in any way, shape or form seen as a challenge to the dog. Um, lastly, if you have a dog that does attack, you want to become a turtle. Um, if you can't get up on a car or climb a tree or get up somehow, your last resort is to become a turtle. So you're going to cover your head and your face with your arms and your forearms and your hands. Um, and you wanna ball up um, kind of in the fetal position um, that will protect the softer parts of your body, your core, your face, your neck um, from a dog bite. So um, I always teach kids either, either if, be a tree first and if you absolutely have to, you become a turtle, but definitely, um, don't scream, don't yell, don't move. Um, the best thing you can do is to not say anything. Um, the less interesting you are, the better uh, chance that that animal will grow bored of you and walk away. So again, one thing I like to also tell people, any dog, any size, any breed can bite. It doesn't matter. It, it's not just pit bulls or aggressive breeds. Any dog, any size can bite you. That is part of their dog, their communication set. Dogs can't talk, dogs can't say, could you please move away from me? Or dogs can't say, you're making me a little uncomfortable, can you please move away? Biting is a warning. Some dogs are gonna growl or snarl first, but that doesn't mean all dogs are gonna growl or snarl first. Biting is a warning. Biting is saying, you are in my space, you are bothering me, you are, you are making me uncomfortable. Um, and so it's, it's important that we teach our children um, not to mess with dogs, like I said, when they're eating or when they have toys in their mouth or when they're sleeping, because most dog bites are um, directed at children. Um, and most dog bites are from a known or family dog. Um, most dog bites are not from some stray walking down the street. Most dog bites are from a dog, a friend's dog, a neighbor's dog, um, even, or even your own family dog. Um, so again, we need to teach children to properly pet a dog and ask permission. One thing I do like to teach children um, on how to properly pet a dog is do not, do not pet a dog on its head, um, on the top of its head. That is considered a sign of dominance to dogs. They don't want to be pet on the top of their head. Um, pet a dog underneath, underneath their chin, um, on their shoulders. That's about as far back as I want you to go um, because if the dog can't see you, he might react if you're petting on the rear or the back end. But um, you really don't wanna pat a dog on the head or, or mess with the top of a dog's head. That is considered a sign of dominance and some dogs are not gonna take very kindly to it. So it's important um, to teach kids that as well. Um, so we, uh, again, are the Harris County Pets Resource Center. We're at 612 Canino Road. Um, like and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Um, we put a lot of educational material out on social media. When we do events, they're on social media. Um, and I do encourage everyone, um, I will, I'm sure, uh, will give out my personal contact information, but you're also welcome to contact me if you want to come for a tour, um, if you want to come see what this place is all about. Um, I highly encourage it. Um, I love my job and I think we do a fabulous job here for the residents of Harris County. And so I really appreciate y'all taking the time to listen to me talk. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shannon. And if we have questions, feel free to place them in the chat or to unmute yourself and just ask. Um, one of the things I've been thinking about, especially this week with the weather that we've had here in Houston is um, what do you advise to have ready to go for poor weather situations in the city? Because I know I, I've seen a few plans, but it would be good to know from an expert what sure. to have on hand, what to be ready for. Um, you obviously want to make sure you have identification on your animal. So obviously, if that's a collar and an ID tag or microchip, you want some identification on there. Um, depending on whether or not you're evacuating or you're staying, you still want to have fresh water, food. Um, it's also a good idea to make sure you have current pictures of your animal, either on your phone or somewhere that you could show somebody in case that animal does get lost. Um, you want to make sure that um, 
there's typically a safe place for your animal to be during a storm or if they have to travel in the car. Um, I do not advise you traveling with even the best of animals in your vehicle during that type of stressful situation if they're not in a carrier. Um, some dogs are great when you're headed to the dog park or you're going someplace, but then, you know, if you're stressed, your animal knows you're stressed. Um, and so always be have a carrier or a crate or something to put your animal in if you have to evacuate. Um, if you can also have your medical records, whether again, it's digitally or a piece of paper, but have your animals medical records um, in case you evacuate somewhere and you need a vet and they go, well, okay, what vaccinations does this animal have or anything like that. It sometimes helps to avoid um, having to pay for vaccinations again um, in order for the vet to treat. So it's important to have some um, medical records for your animals as well. Awesome. And we do have some questions from Rilla Wolf. Could you suggest a good GPS for a dog that doesn't break the bank? We recently lost our dog over the 4th of July. You're so sorry, Rilla. That's awful. And we very luckily found her. Oh, good. After three solid days of searching, but I don't want our family or the dog to go through that again. I don't know of any um, good GPS tracking. I know Apple makes one, I think, that you can use on your phone as well as the tag. Um, I think there's a couple, um, and those are, those are great. Um, again, I would also suggest microchipping because even if your animal is stolen, let's just say your animal is stolen out of your backyard or wherever, um, and someone has the intention of keeping it or whatever, the first time they take that animal to a veterinarian for any type of vaccination or whatever, that vet is going to routinely scan that animal's microchip or see if the animal has a microchip. Um, and that, you know, Joe Smith brings the animal in for something, but the microchip is registered to Mary Jones. That vet is going to be like, hmm, you're not Mary, you know, you're not Mary Jones. Um, and so it's important, the microchip. Um, I, like I said, I know Apple makes a good GPS for animals, but I don't know of another brand off the top of my head. Okay, thank you. I started looking on Amazon and they start at like $10 and go to 500. And the worst thing to do is spend a little bit on something that doesn't work at all. And the microchip is great. She's got it, right? She's a rescue, but Perfect. that doesn't help us, you know, triangulate. But I just, I just thought you, would, if, if anybody would know, <laughs> you would yeah. know. Um, again, I, I've used Apple before. Um, I will say this, even the Apple one is not 100% wonderful. Um, it kind of depends on what the reception is in the area the animal's at and things like that. But um, yeah, it, it, it definitely can help locate most of the time. Okay, thank you so much. You're welcome. And I've seen a few on Chewy as well. So that might also be a good place to look. You said Chewy? Chewy. Chewy. Okay, great. I use yes. them. Thank you. Um, another question. Are there any virtual volunteer opportunities? That's something I was also wondering. Well, uh, um, I live in Northwest Houston, so about 45 minutes from y'all. We don't currently have any virtual volunteer opportunities because um, we just have you know, with the living beings in our building, we need help with those actual living beings, unfortunately. Um, that doesn't mean that we don't have offsite events where we need volunteers for that might be closer to where you live um, if you don't want to make the drive or you're just too far away. So um, we do, like I said, post those on our social media pages. Um, and we also have a volunteer and foster face group page. It's closed until you um, obviously um, register to be a foster or a volunteer, but we post uh, offsite events on that as well. So there might be something closer to you that um, can work for you driving wise. Great, I will do that, thank you. Other websites or resources that you would recommend for pet owners looking for say advice, products, that kind of thing, you know? Um, well, as far as products go, that's really varied. I mean, Chewy is obviously great. Amazon has the same things. So it just kind of depends what your preference is. Um, our website, countypets.com, under our pet resources tab at the top, has a lot of information, um, whether you need to rehome a pet, lost and found information, um, low-cost spay and neutering information, um, and everything all the way down to 
what exactly does the leash law say? <laughs> so um, that pet resources tab on our website has a lot of information on it. I did want to note, though, when I talk about a leash law, that does not apply to community cats. So if you see an ear tipped community cat, they are not need to be on a leash, <laughs> obviously. Um, but uh, but cats owned cats. Yes, uh, that the leash law technically does apply to them. But our website has great information. Awesome. OK, so Ken has said, I've encountered a few dogs from rescues who seem to be great with females at the shelter and the lady who brought them home. But when walking around the neighborhood, display hostility to men, even though they are friendly with ladies. Is this as common as my limited experience makes it seem? I wouldn't say it's common, but um, you know, every animal that comes in here, we have no idea what its history is. Absolutely no idea. Even some owner surrenders won't give enough information to kind of know what its its history is. Um, and so, yes, I, I wouldn't say it's common, but it's definitely uh, something we encounter. Um, for example, I have a veterinar veterinarian technician here um, who can magically deal with the most aggressive animal in this facility, cat or dog. Um, but there's also, you know, uh, another person using the exact same techniques, the exact same voice, the exact same mannerisms that animal doesn't like. Um, you know, like I keep preaching, animals are just like people. They're not, they may not like everybody. Um, there may be a smell on you they don't like. You know, animals are very um, sensitive to smell and sight. So if there's something about you, you know, the, the, the COVID wearing of the masks has an issue here. I have learned that when I walk up to the kennels, I take my mask down. Um, they see my face, they see me smiling, they see my, you know, calm voice. Um, some people think, oh, well, the teeth would show aggression on me, but that's really not the case um, if my voice is saying otherwise. So um, yeah, there's, you know, I will say this too, a lot of men, um, not a lot, but a lot of men are um, more heavy handed, I would say, in their disciplining of uh, dogs in general. Um, and so that's often why some dogs are not that thrilled with men. Um, they've learned that the uh, discipline is a little stronger <laughs> um, coming from a man than it is from a woman. Um, also too, because men are just physically, you know, often stronger. Um, but we do see that, but I will tell you when I think I've got an animal's personality nailed down and I'm, I'm trying to market this animal to a rescue and I know exactly where this animal should go, I'll have my rescue coordinator come in and go, oh no, I walked in just fine on a leash. She's perfectly fine. I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, they're they're like people. Some days they have bad days, some days they have good days. They're like people. Okay. Um, my question is about adoptions from you guys. With that, do you guys have a separate adoption website or is it still part of your regular site? Still, still part of the regular site. The, the adopt tab at the at the top of the page will give you all the information. You can make an adoption appointment online versus having to call. Um, we take in about 50,000 calls a year. Um, and so we try to make adoption a little easier <laughs> instead of having to call and make an appointment. You can just make an appointment online. But everything you need to know about adopting from us is under that adopt tab. The fees, um, what type of pet you should choose, how you can be a responsible pet owner, what the process is, that type of thing. And again, you do not have to live in Harris County to adopt from us. But we try to make it as, as seamless as possible. Yes. Um, with this warm weather that we've been having, are there things that we can do to help keep our pets cool? Yes, um, you know, obviously the common sense answer is to not leave them outside during extreme temperatures. You always make sure they have plenty of fresh water, um, you know, a shade of some sort to lay under if they have to be outside. Um, some breeds are great outside. They have a very short, thin coat and they're not as effective. But if you put a husky outside in Houston, Texas, it's almost cruel. Um, you know, if you're going to leave them outside, their coats are just not meant for the higher temperatures. And so in order to keep animals cool, um, I even have a little, uh, I don't even have young kids anymore, but I have a little kitty sprinkler thing that I turn on that shoots kind of water everywhere that the dogs run through. Um, you know, if I have to leave them outside, if, 
if I have someone working in the house and they have to be outside for an extended amount of time, I always make sure that they have some type of fresh water source and then some way to keep cool, whether it be shade or water or something. Okay, well, I'm checking our chat and it looks like we are caught up with the questions. I'm going to give people just one extra second chance if you guys want to chime in to ask questions or if you have things about Harris County Pets that you want to ask Shannon. We do send a follow up email with her on it and you guys. So if you want to be on that email, please make sure that I have your email. Um, and if you would like, feel free to share your email, Shannon, as well. We'll type it in the chat right now. Yes. And rescues are the best sort of pets. Having two myself and a dog nephew who's also a rescue. <laughs> I'm really excited to find such a great organization here in Harris County. So and one thing I also want to mention before I let y'all go is, um, you know, we have short term fostering opportunities. So if you're number one considering adopting and you don't really know what type of pet or if this is going to be a thing for you. Um, you can foster short term and see if you even like it. Um, that's always something that we have available here. Um, we always need fosters for cats and dogs, kittens and puppies, all sorts of things. Um, typically not puppies now that I say that. The puppies get adopted before I can even turn around. So, um, but the um, definitely the dogs. Um, if you just want to come and walk dogs, I promise you this place is not a sad, depressing place at all. We have an entire dog park area where the old facility used to be that has covered pavilions and a dog walking path and little doggy fountains and all sorts of wonderful stuff. Um, and so you can come walk some dogs and give them some exercise um, that they're not getting while they're in the kennel. So again, volunteer opportunities galore, fostering opportunities, um, as much or as little as you wanna do. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Shannon, for coming out today and for giving us a real background on the Harris County Pets organization and the shelter and what it is that you do with community outreach. Um, we really appreciate it. And it's great to know so much more about pet care. Um, Ken has made another comment just a remark about your open arms best dog i've ever had was a rescue dog from an area that killed dogs who looked like him um mariana wood says those cats are homeless okay shannon yeah. i have yeah. two adolescent cats in the neighborhood i think they need to be spayed they are friendly can i bring them to you and wait to take them back uh yes just call our main number 281-999-3191 and they'll walk you through that process Okay, and thank you, Mariana, for wanting to take care of your community cats. Yes. Yeah, we always, um, the community cat program has its own volunteers um, as well. They do transport. So you come here, you pick up a few cats and you drop them back off where um, they were found. Um, or you can provide enrichment here at the shelter for them while they stay here with us. We try not to keep them here too long, but um, we also have a lot of animals to spay and neuter. <laughs> so sometimes they're here for a few days and, you know, an outdoor cat's not real happy in an indoor kennel. She says, thank you. And I agree with that sentiment. It's great to know all of the things that Harris County is doing for our wonderful cats and dogs and our pets here. And we really appreciate you coming out this morning to life to give us kind of a life overview of hand, animals and health and, you know, the services that are provided and You're that welcome. are available. And do join us next, next, next week. It's in two weeks at noon on September the 29th for Paula Gonzalez for the origin story of the pinata to celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month. Thank you so much, and we will see you guys on September the 29th. Thank you.